Hey guys, Tech Rally here, and welcome to the first lesson of React Bits. This tutorial series is going to be a little bit different than your block stack tutorial in that there is no real set schedule of what we're going to be working on with this uh, series. This is mostly focused on little bits of information about React that I personally find very useful or helpful for me, and that could be all ranges, but not limited to React fundamentals, cool libraries that exist that are out there, and just anything that maybe you guys want to learn about. Just put it in the comment section below and we could definitely work on that. Another thing that I'm adding here is my Patreon page. And for this series specifically, I'm going to give exclusive access to every other video to my Patreon users. And if you find the content that I provide very useful and beneficial for your career, I would really love your support on my Patreon page. This is something I'm relatively new with and I want to experiment. So if you feel like supporting the channel, uh, definitely Patreon is the way to go to get more content and information. Uh, with that being said, let's move on to the first lesson and get this ball rolling. The first lesson that we're going to be working on is React hooks and specifically the use state. So hooks explained. The minimum requirement for using hooks is React 16.8.0. And in general, before hooks existed, components in React always needed to render some UI. And this was super inconvenient for sharing non-visual logic and solutions like render props and higher order components existed. Functions are the perfect solution for this problem for code reusability. However, functions do not have local React state in them and requires turning them into classes. If you are an experienced React developer, you probably have heard about functional components or classless components. And this was generally to just render UI logic only. But if you're like me and have used React for a while, you initially think that, oh, this component doesn't need to use state. So I'm just going to use a function component. And then two months down the line, you're like, crap, uh, I need to know when this button is clicked or when this uh, page has loaded or if I need to render some independent information on that component, you have to change it to a class component. Now that we have hooks, hooks will let you use the React features of a state-based component, and also will allow you to pass in JavaScript functions without requiring visual logic. So the flexibility of using a hook gives us the best of both when trying to do one or the other. Before we move on to some code, I want to show you a very high level of a difference between class-based components and a component using hooks. In the class-based component, we can define our internal state one of two ways. If you're using the ES7 syntax, then you could say state equals open object type of off. Or if you define it in the constructor function itself, you could say this dot state type of off. And whenever you want to update that specific state variable, you will call the class based function this uh, set state and define whatever value you want for that specific variable. In contrast, using a hook based component, you can define the state by using a function called useState, and that's built into the React library. And what you're going to do is write const type, comma set type, and then equal to the useState of off. So reading from left to right, the const of type will be initially set to off by using the function useState. And to update that state variable is the second element in that array called setType. The standard practice to setting a variable via function is to include the lowercase word of set before whatever that function name you wanted to call. If we called the state variable called um, open, we will define the second function as set open. Similar to how we set the state via this.setState, we now have a built-in function called setType. We could call that anytime we want. Let's look at a real life example in a code set. In this very simple example below, we have a class-based component called app. From a high level perspective, whenever a user clicks a button, it's going to add one to whatever the previous state was. And in the code below, we can see that we define a state variable called count to zero. We created a function called add. And what it does is it calls the function this.setState. 
it takes a current count value based on state and it adds one. And we attach that function to the on click handler for our button. And below that is the this.state.count, which, which is represented by this number. As you can see, we have some commented out code here, which is the component using hooks. And even though I can just uncomment and show, show you how it works, let's just work on it together. And we could always reference below to see if I made a mistake. The first thing we want to do is import the useState function. And like I said before, you have to be using React 16.8.0 or above. So after the import React, I'm going to add a comma and then add use state. I'm going to comment out this code here and then start from scratch. So I'm going to write function app. I'm not sure if I explained it in the PowerPoint slides, but all hook function components need to be capitalized. And then we're going to write const count, which is equivalent to our state variable in our class component. And we're going to define a second function called set count. And we'll set that equal to use state of zero. So what this says is that we're going to have a variable called count, and we're going to initialize it with the value of zero. We're going to create a second function called add, similar to how we did it in the class-based component. And we're going to call the function set count and add the current count plus one. If you notice, we don't have any separation like we did above. And it's because we could use any of the variables that we defined in our functions because everything is scoped to the top. So a rule of thumb is to always define your state variables at the top of the function. So here we could write another function, we could write another state variable called um, open, and then we could say set open, and then we could say use state, false, as, as such. And right now we're not gonna be using anything like that, but it's just for an example purposes. Like we wouldn't wanna put it here, because then it won't because open will not be defined at this point so you can't actually use it um, with that being said we're going to return something to show in the HTML so let's define a top level div and we'll give it a class name of app we'll create a single button and give it a onClick handler function, which we will call add. We'll add a line break. And here we'll just show the count. Awesome. Notice that in this scenario, there's no this.something or this.state.something. It feels as though it's a plain JavaScript function with easy accessible variables. Let's see if the example works. So when I click add, it adds the button. We were able to see one-to-one -one the similarities and the differences of using a hook-based component versus a class-based component. And this hook-based component gives you a lot more flexibility and a lot less boilerplate in terms of what is required to create a state-based component. If you're a JavaScript purist, you know that there's no such thing as a class in JavaScript. Everything is a function. If we were to put this code from an ES6 to an ES5 converter, you'll see right away what changes it's making to make it give the perception of a class. Um, I hope this lesson was eye-opening. To show you that hooks are not scary, it's very similar to state-based components. And in the next lesson, we're going to expand on React hooks by talking about the use effect. And the use effect will be very similar to how a state component handles lifecycle methods. Uh, talk to you in the second lesson. And that video, like I said, will be on my Patreon page. If you like this channel, I would appreciate the likes, the subscribes. And yeah, check out my Patreon channel. I'll be doing my best to update videos weekly and really give you some insight on how I think as a front-end developer.